this is Gyro Gear Gearless with RV Hacking on the Cheap, and but wait a minute, this is a brand new 2021 36 foot trailer, and there is nothing cheap about it. They may be using penny quality, but they're not asking penny prices. Today I'll be discussing how to install an internal switch for an electric hot water heater. Despite the user's asking price, there is no internal switch for the hot water heater, and that's a very important feature to me. I don't turn my hot water heater on and off once a season, or once per week, or once per trip. I turn it on and off several times a day in order to load balance. You see, this trailer has a 30 amp input, and it has about a 60 amp demand when you add up all the breakers. It's very easy to exceed the 30 amps that are allowed, especially when you consider that you really shouldn't maintain more than 25 amps. I'm told that this really isn't unusual, but the only way to turn off the hot water heater is to come outside to the outside hot water heater panel, open it up, if you can, and all the way down on the bottom is where the electric switch is for the electric element in the hot water heater. This is not very convenient to do several times a day, especially if it's raining. I just want to turn off the power and save the 10 amps. For the microwave, for the fridge, for the heater, for the AC, or TV, or coffee pot, or anything else. Sometimes you just don't want the extra 10 amps draw. This is a 15 amp illuminated rocker switch, and some people just tear out the original switch, put really long wires on it, and mount it somewhere else in the camper to make a remote switch. I do not advise that. I actually want to keep the original switch on the heater to lock it out seasonally so that my kids don't accidentally turn on the hot water heater when I know that it's drained and dry. If you were to turn on the electric heater while it was dry, that will severely damage your heater. It could actually be a fire hazard, potentially, if left that way. Instead, you want to wire an additional switch in series with the original. Or, if your heater happens to have a plug on it, you can interrupt the main electrical plug without splicing any wires. And that's actually what I'm going to do for my trailer. My hot water heater does have a wall plug, but it is buried deep, deep, deep in the guts. But because I do have a wall plug, instead of using this, I'm going to use one of these, ready-made units. It already has a male and a female Edison built into it and a switch on the side. Except now I'm going to remove that switch instead, and that's going to be my controlling switch to disconnect the plug from the wall outlet. It's the same effect as splicing into the original wiring, but I don't need to actually cut any original wires. The switch that's used in these units is exactly the same as this one. Once again, you have a common, this first one, which is just one end of the light bulb. And then you have two other contacts that are the actual switch. The light bulb is connected between the common and one of the switch terminals. Does it matter which one? Yes, it does. It depends on what function you want the light to perform. If you watched my under bed lighting video, you saw that I used an always on light to be able to find the switch in the dark. The more common usage is to have the light indicate when the power of the switch is on, which is what I'm going to do here. If you do get this backward and your light stays on all the time, it just means you connected the light to the line side instead of the load side of the switch. In that case, simply reverse the two contacts that are switched, but do leave that common connector alone. Now here's that switch unit with the switch pulled out and the three contacts extended by a length of 12 gauge three conductor wire. Standard indoor Romex. If you use 14 gauge, it's good for 15 amps. 12 gauge should be good for closer to 20 amps. My hot water heater is only 10 amps, so I'm already building in a certain margin of safety by using heavier gauge wire than I need to. Do not use light gauge extension cord or similar ridiculously light wire. That would not be safe. Now where to put the switch? I'm going to locate my new switch in one of the panels of the sink, right below the original control panel. It was just too much effort to try to fish it up the wall to be right next to the original control panel, and at my waist is just as good when I'm standing in the same place. To make my hole, I simply use a razor and cut out the outline of the switch very carefully. This is very thin Luan, and for once, having your trailer made out of cardboard is an advantage. As long as you're very careful, you can make a clean hole with a simple box cutter razor. Here the hole is prepared, and I pass the wires through. 
I reconnect my switch onto the spade terminals and push the switch back into place. It's that simple. Back on the hot water side, I simply plug in the switch unit in between the original plug and the original wall socket. So I haven't cut into any of the original trailer wiring. And now we'll test it. Here the switch is off and the light is dark. You can see I'm drawing 0.65 amps at the moment. Now I've switched it on and the light is on to warn me that I'm using power for the hot water heater. And yes indeed I am. My amperage has jumped up to 11.5. You can see the draw of the hot water heater. And if I want to run the air conditioner in the microwave, it's as simple as turning it off again. This has been Gyro Gear Loose with RV Hacking on the Cheap. If this video has been useful to you, please like, subscribe, and hit the little bell so you'll be notified of any new videos I make.